I'm Taryn. I'm a watercolor abstract artist from Mexico and based on Silicon Valley. Hello, and I'm Siglinda. I'm also an abstract artist. I'm a Belgian import into the US and I also live in Silicon Valley. And I am honored to welcome you to episode two of Art Sparks with Taryn and Siglinda. Short bursts of conversation about what else? Art. So what we have for today? What are we going to talk today? Well, Tarin, I was thinking last time we were talking about why art matters, right? And then we got into the, the benefits of living with art. So I thought we could discuss that today. What do you think? I like it. And because I realized that the two of us were kind of biased, right? Because we're both artists. So of course we want to live with art. So what I did is I did some research to see what scientists say about the benefits of living with art. So not just our opinion. Not just our opinion. That's I thought good, we'll, 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 we'll make it a little bit more objective today and then we can comment on it. So, so the viewers get both. How about that? I yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I got a little cheat sheet here. <laughs> All the things that we as a society right now, because of the global pandemic, struggle with, art actually saw, um, proposes a benefit to it on our on our day-to-day -day life. Do you want to hear what they are? Yep. Okay, so it was broken down into four elements that are four um, benefits of art in your day-to-day -day life. Right. One, a positive effect on your sense of hope, self-worth, and well-being. Number two, it improves our sense of connectedness and it widens our social networks. Number three, living with art decreases depression and anxiety. I can attest to that. <laughs> and four, it reduces stress. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And this is just the conclusion. Now we can, I can share why these four elements are so important, but do you have a fifth to add or was there anything that struck you with these four? Well, actually, I agree with all of them, especially the last ones, because yes, for us that we make them, it's something that is natural, but I would love to hear what is each one of it, yes. Yeah, okay, so, so th that was pretty much the end conclusion at the beginning, right? So why, where, where do these positive effects come from, right? Mm -hmm. So number one would be that art offers an escape from the everyday reality. What do you think about that? Ooh, well, see, in that one, I would say also it's very personal. Because for uh -huh. my escape, it could be, I love nature. Mm -hmm. So for me, just moving to nature, or something for my sister would be like seeing something from, the, from um, I don't know, a painting or a photograph of, of, a, of, a, of a sea, of a beach, or a beautiful sunset. So uh -huh. it moves, it moves, it one personal in each different places. So I think it's between moving away of where you are, you transport uh -huh. it to someplace else. But it's but my escape is gonna be different from your escape. So in that respect, it's pretty. That's easy. true. That's true. It really is what you what you see or how you connect to the artwork, right? So I I kind of like this story, you know, of like just imagine for a moment, right? That okay, this is in pre-COVID <laughs> when you actually <laughs> had to work in an office and not just have a commute down the stairs. <laughs> just imagine that you come home from work, right? And it was a really long day and thank goodness for the commute to like clear your head a little bit before you come home. But you know, you put your key in the lock, you walk in, you put your bag down, take your coat off, unless you live in California. And then there's this artwork that greets you and you walk up to it and whether it's a nature painting or a photo or a photograph or it's abstract it's kind of like it's an artwork you really love so it draws you in and then you know after this long day you just discover something new in this artwork that you hadn't seen before mm -hmm. because i do feel that artworks rarely deliver all their secrets right at once like i have artworks that i had for 10 years and then I see something like I never noticed that before. <laughs> but yeah, but then you have to be curious about it. That's, that's true. It. That's so true. it has to be like two ways. Like, okay, one is going to be the art, and it's going to be curious. <gasps> oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so so it really matters that the artwork, that you love it and that you pay attention to it and not that it's just some decoration that you walk by just to not have a white wall or something, right? <laughs> and it has to connect with you so you can escape mm -hmm. and you can do it. So it's a, it's a part of it has to be part of yourself that you're going to move you. So yes, definitely yeah. escaping. Love, the, yeah, c connection. Mm -hmm. Yes, connection with the artwork. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. All right. So number two was art is good medicine. It helps you heal. Mm. So see, when I think about it, yes, when you go to, okay, if you imagine, imagine, for example, in the, in the hospitals, there is all gloomy and the feeling is not nice. In, so you need something uplifting. I think, mm -hmm. uh, and something also to an escape as well. So they can move you outside of your surrounding mm -hmm. and make you feel better and make hopeful. Yes, and take out the pain or, or something maybe funny that make you out take out the pain. Absolutely. You know? <clears throat> and it will be a good thing to say to our viewers. Next time you go and see and go to a dentist's office or a waiting room, go and look around what you, what art you see and what makes you feel and why do you think they picked this piece over there? Like. Yes, start also looking around like, okay, why they pick the work it is and they have in the walls. That's true, that's true. Well, so what I read is that it's already proven in hospitals and dentist office and medical settings, well, especially in hospitals, that when there's positive, uplifting, like your, to use your word, art on the wall, they actually um, notice remarkable shorter hospital stays and people are able to get off their medicine way faster. So you're right about the uplifting thing and, um, and the distraction because they also say that if art is like actively um, brought into the treatment, like for instance, say in the dental office, right? When there's beautiful art and you know, while, the, while you can talk, you know, the dental hygienist is talking to you. <laughs> And you know what? It, and then you know she may be talking about the art if she had if the weather is not the appropriate for the day. <laughs> but it's like focusing on something beautiful. It's like distraction from whatever pain or illness or stress is going on. But here's another thing that you said. You just said that the the medicine, you know, the healing thing about art, it, it was sort of related to the escaping aspect of art. And so here's the amazing thing you know and you and you also related it to nature so we've all had this moment where we see a gorgeous sunset over the ocean right mm -hmm. do you feel this oh amazing well apparently art can do that too and when you have that awe feeling in your body it releases dopamine in your brain and that's the happiness hormone so this totally explains the relaxation, the uplifting, the escape, the healing. But it, but again, it needs to be an artwork that you, that is beautiful, that you love, that you connect with, that creates a sense of whoa in your body, as if it, as if you were, you know, looking at this gorgeous sunset over the ocean. So beautiful. Oh so my God! It lifts me. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> So now, now, okay, okay, now that I see it with another eyes, so like, oh, see, I have a, you, it's something so nice, and yeah, I'm getting right, also right. an extra bonus. So, so now we also have our new drug, right? You know, if we need a, a happy, a happy hit in our brain, we just go look at the piece of art that we love the just most. Just kidding with it. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> oh my God, we're having too much fun today. <laughs> okay, so number three, and this is oh. a big one, right? Mm -hmm. So art opens your heart and feeds your mind. And I have five items underneath that. And the first one is art evokes emotion. What do you oh. think, Karin? Well, in my experience, and that's coming up from when I was really, really young. And this one is, um, I grew up in my, in, well, my grandfather used to paint. Mm -hmm. So instead of having photographs of the homes, he used to do um, the painting of the home. He was a watercolor artist. Uh, so, I know. See, we're like, that one was similar because we got, I grew up with original paintings on my walls, okay? That's uh -huh, I grew up. Uh -huh. So instead of having a photograph of the place, it was a beautiful painting that he did of mm -hmm. the house he used to live. 
And there was one in particular that it was where I used to visit when it was the holidays. So every time I go and see it, I just, it moves me back to there and makes me realize, like me remember uh-huh. those times. Aww. So in that respect, for me, it's really personal, but it was like, yes, it brings some memories and emotions. Mm-hmm. So, and that's not being a painter, but it's being as a viewer and a close, yeah, a close relative with it. I I agree. I think that emotions don't always get their due space in our daily life or in society. And art is like a safe space where you can just let it come. Great. And then so the other thing that I really love is art always has a story to tell. Okay. Now in here. I have a question, but they have, they have they have to they do have two stories because then they have the story of the of the painter of the creator and the story of the viewer. Yeah, I agree. So some artworks actually come with a story, right? Like in the artwork itself, right? Uh-huh. If you ask the artist, like, is there a story about this work, and then mm-hmm. the artist can tell the story. But I agree that whatever the artwork, the art, the story that the art has to tell has just as much to do with the artist itself and the story of the artist but also like how was the piece acquired or how did you discover the artist or there's like a whole history to it i mean whether you stumbled upon it online or you visited the artist in the studio or it was through a gallery there's always or it was on a from a travel right maybe it's a memory or a souvenir from from a place you visited there's Mm -hmm. Even if, even if it's not an actual reproduction of the place, but just mm-hmm. we bought this abstract piece of art when we went to visit, blah, 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 right? And so there's... Yeah, that's funny because we have a lot of, in, in the galleries, we have a lot of visitors that just come over and they want to buy the piece because they're visiting and they want to just take part of that place in uh-huh. the art and take it home with them. Yes. Yeah, so there's, so the stories that art tell are so multi-layered and it doesn't have to be the one that the artist put in the work if any right because you pointed out to me a couple weeks ago like well Siglana, not every art has an actual story but there's so many layers of story around it if you're open to it and then Mm -hmm. if again we're going back to that word curious i think that's also what makes an artwork more interesting right and and changes your viewpoint and your connection with the piece if you know the story Exactly, the connection, because if you connect to the story of the art, of the painter, of the artist, then it's magical, because it's then you, you, you're going to get the viewer and the artist together, and that's when it's the best thing ever, because that way you put pieces together in one art. I actually agree with that. I love the, the, a direct connection with my collectors and, and meet them at least once, even if it's over Zoom, so that you can put a face to a name and, and, a, and a voice to the words and have some kind of a rapport. And um, it just, it just um, yeah, I think art can be so personal, but that, and so bringing that personal connection in mm-hmm. just makes it, like you say, magical. And, and you just start seeing the art piece that you bring into your daily life into a totally different view right so with that story um you know comes that art is an excellent conversation starter Mm -hmm. which opens the doors to more meaningful connections with other like-minded people what do you think of that well see that one i would particularly like with the abstract pieces Uh uh-huh because because um with abstract pieces you also come with a viewer. I'm always trying to follow. I don't know why I always go to the viewer, but like I put up a post last week and asked about it was an abstract piece. And I said, what did they see? And some mm-hmm. of them see, saw the sand, another one saw a field of wheat. So for me, it would be like, why? Where, how did you grow up? I have no, I'm a city girl, so like, where do you grow up with this hill of, of wheat? I would just love to see where the people come from, or why are they seeing these things that they're seeing in the abstract piece? So for me, like when you're talking about an art, and I, especially when I know with abstract, because that's part of the imagination of the viewer that will oh, come yes. out of totally. it. Totally. So, uh, so you can see a lot, you can learn a lot about that person 
without asking like much questions you just tell you the stories i don't know that's what i like about it. yeah i have two two things i want to say to that one is you know an exit conversation starter without the artist right like if you have like if you are at an, at an art reception mm -hmm. standing there alone with a bunch of strangers if you happen to fly solo that night there the uh, you, there's always something to talk about with the other people there because you can talk about the art, mm -hmm. right? So there's always something to talk about. If you have like a dinner party or a cocktail party at home, you know, and, and your guests come in, I'm like, oh my God, tell me about that piece, right? And then bam, you know, an interesting conversation starts and immediately like, like who knows what will come out of that, especially because people can interpret the artwork in their own way and so I, you know actually you know what your guests may just be adding another layer to the story i mean so it's it's no matter where you are the artist doesn't even have to be present to to um to generate these interesting conversations mm -hmm. however with the artists i ha i this actually goes to our next point that art sparks interest and curiosity but i fully agree with you when people ask me especially the abstract pieces. So what is your artwork about? I almost don't want to say. Mm. <laughs> and oh. it's not that I don't know what it's about. I can talk your ears off about it. But it is mm -hmm. so much more interesting when you tell me what you see because then I learn and then we can have this conversation. And then some of the things you say, maybe things that I never even thought about, but then they're food for the next art piece. Because if I just tell you, then I'm just staying stuck inside my own box here. And then I can't grow as an artist. But if somebody else tells me like, well, to me, it feels blah, 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 blah. Or I see this, then I get so hungry for more. I'm like, tell me more. What do you feel? What do you see? <laughs> like, and then it, then it, and then, you know, it's, it just fuel, creative fuel for the next piece. I just love that. And I agree with you because sometimes... The, the viewer's idea is so much richer than I intend. So sometimes it's like, oh, yes, it's just there's some shoes, but they can see like such a wonderful things. And I'm like, no, don't want to tell you that. I'm like, no, 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 no. So I love that part as well. And then like, so people like, no, only when they really ask for it, I will tell them because otherwise. Or I will tell them in the end, right? Like, okay. Like, I'll wait. And then if it, <laughs> and, or if, or if it gets, becomes part of the conversation, I'll weave it in. But it's so much more interesting. And then the thing is, because it, it sort of invites fewer to engage more with the piece, right? And be curious about it. And then the word that you used earlier, um, it opens up this imagination. And I think, that is that is a purpose of art no matter what you know to to get out of your own head get out of your own limitations get out of your own life but it goes it goes for us too right <laughs> if we just make our art and then, and then regurgitate what it's about we stay stuck in our own box yeah. right mm -hmm. so and then when other people tell us what how how their imagination perceives the art it helps our imagination open up and move it to the next level so there's a really uh win-win benefit going on there. anyway and then a last the last item under art opens your heart and feeds your mind is more about this mind and it is that the best art encourages more open-minded and free thinking oh i love that one three yes uh the thing is um uh, i like this one because um well, in here we can put several things and one is what the art could be open in the mind and what they're trying to say. So I think it's going to be free thinking in a lot of ways. One is what the artists want to say. Mm -hmm. And the other one is what medium they're going to use. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, um, so it's the meaning, but also it can be open mind for different mediums. Okay, and I was explain. For example, the other day when, well, um, before COVID, so it was not the other day, but a few months back, I went with my son, he's 17, um, to a young museum to, to see the exhibit of Ed Hardy, mm -hmm. tattoo artist, tattoo artist, okay? So it opened my mind to say like, wow, you would never guess like tattoo could be so rich, 
mm-hmm. so artistic. So in that respect, it opened my mind to see what else is there. Right, right. It's not just traditional paint. It could be open your mind to different or like maybe a way of doing art. I know graffiti. Or, so in that respect, for me, it was open the mind to different mediums. But then you can have also open mind when you have political st- statements that they can open your mind to different points of view. Right. Yeah. So in that respect, it's opening mm-hmm. your mind in a lot, a lot of levels. In- yeah. So <laughs> for me, excuse me, it's not a COVID cough. We're safe. <laughs> and I'm home alone. <laughs> and we're six feet away. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. For me, the big theme in my work really is reimagine what else is possible, right? And it's really, I'm always focused on whatever I do. Even if it seems realistic, there will always be something that you cannot quite put your finger on. I never want to close the box of defining something. I always want to have this loophole where you can redefine whatever you're looking at or um, um, turn your perspective into something that you would approve of or that you would like if you don't like it. It's like, and it's for me, it's and now I'm going to sound like a rebel, but it's sort of like a way of approaching art as well. Like if there's something in front of you that you don't like, you know, can you change your perspective on it or <laughs> instead of just dismissing it or having to suck it up? <laughs> I mean, there's always another option, right? There's always another choice. And I feel just like art is a safe space for emotion. I feel art is the safe space to to, um, interpret things in a different way, build things in a different way, define things in a different way. And in the end, what I read is when people get into this habit of seeing more options and more possibility and more and sort of get out of their own head their own limitations their own box including us right Mm -hmm. it leads it actually leads to more tolerance in on a society level and more empathy towards others and then and then also for you it leads to more emotional and intellectual self-confidence what do you think of that i like the empathy yes because when you see the artist well not just when you see the artist as a way of expressing yourself and your open mind to what they're saying, yes, you start to understand them as their point of view. And I think it's a good muscle to use or new muscle to to really work and is to understand the other point of view. And that, that's that was my point. Thank you for <clears throat> making it clear. It's like a muscle that you train but in art it's a safe it's safe but then you can apply that muscle to your spouse or your kids or your neighbor you know this more open-minded you know seeing it differently what else is possible there's always another choice and you know with there's with the idea that there's always another choice also comes this feeling of freedom <laughs> well, and also learning different perspective. It makes you richer. It makes you, it makes yeah. you more, more, like more grounded, more prepared. I don't know. So well, that's where the whole emotional, intellectual self confidence comes from, right? The the richer you are in that regard, like the more self confidence you get. Mm-hmm. Oh man, this is a good one. Mm-hmm. I'm liking our conversation today. <laughs> I got two more points. So okay. one. We already touched upon, and it sort of is that um, art elevates your social status. Okay. Especially when you have interesting art in your home and you have dinner parties, cocktail parties, you know, it it turns your home into something that you're so proud of to share with friends and families. And especially since, you know, the interesting conversations are now all but guaranteed, right? (laughs) Mm-hmm. But see, this point was like I was intrigued about this one. So oh, that okay. I'm glad I'm glad that you pointed out more details about it because right now I think about it, it, it just it just I think what you're saying is that you make the home more your who you are. So when you look for pieces that that are connected with you or they mean something to you, it means that in your home it becomes richer in meaning and in your own. I don't know personality. Maybe what I'm saying is trying to be like your own. Um, your home becomes part of yourself. 
they have their own stories. Yeah, it it uh, it doesn't work if you're just buying art to keep up with the Joneses, right? If you just buy art because that's what other people seem to like and appreciate, that's not going to work. You are very true. Um, I didn't think of that, but you're right. So it's um, it's not a um, it's not a showing off. Mm-hmm. It's actually when you when when you when you buy art that reflects what connects with you and your integrity and your personality, you become a more interesting person towards your peers, right? And your connections, your family, because of the artwork that you brought into your life. Like, it all goes together again. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Right, good. So your home becomes richer as well. Yes, yes. Because you're well. putting everything <laughs> in there. Like, okay, this is me, guys. And I'm, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And then the last point, which is not relevant, not as relevant today unless we're talking home offices. <laughs> But the last point is that studies at different universities actually show that art enhances productivity in the office. And I want to read you a few numbers, if I may. Mm-hmm. But it showed that people worked 15% faster and enjoyed better health in an office with art. And if they actually had a say into where the art was placed, this is a funny one. It's not what art to choose, but where the art was placed, their productivity boost was double to 30%. That's huge. Yes. So if you have a home office where you feel like you, do, you cannot put your best foot forward, maybe it's worth looking at the art and placing the art because look, a 15% productivity boost or 30% if you hang it on the nail where you want it, <laughs> well, 30% and better health. It was like, I was mind blown when I read these numbers. Well, I was thinking if you are like, okay, well, if you have to work, you want to have an uplifting place to work. Yes. True. And if you are tired, And you mm-hmm. want your eyes to rest or just to mind to rest, then you want to be able to shift your attention to someplace else. And I, I think I'm trying to get to the logic behind it. it. Yeah. So the art in your home on a day-to-day basis benefits your sense of hope, self-worth, and well-being. It improves your sense of connectedness and widens our social networks, even though a lot of it is online right now. It decreases depression and anxiety, and it reduces stress. Oh my God, beautiful. What is not to like here? I know. Yes, you did a right? really good job. I love it. Thank you Thanks. so much. <laughs> so, what are we talking about next week, Turin? Because where do we take all this now? Because now people are eager to have art in their homes. Yes, we have to find, okay, how to look for art, how to find art for each one of us, how to look up art. What do you think? Yeah, finding art that connects with them. Okay. Sounds awesome. Let's do that. All, All right. right. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. As you know, we're just starting out, and we would love to reach a lot more people. And we'll be back next week. Thanks yes. so much. Thank you. Bye. We have fun. Bye.